So I brought a whiteboard with me to Chicago to give updates on the ground of what's happening at the convention. And my first update is that when you're from Ohio, apparently everyone wants to know what in the heck did Ohio do to produce JD Vance? Uh, and I don't want to sound offensive here, but I think my first response is you cannot blame Ohio for this. Um, you know, this is someone who, um, you know, after law school, went out west, didn't come back. And I think most of what he's talking about, he learned somewhere else because I haven't heard this stuff talked about in Ohio. You know, angry cat ladies, I, bizarre, um, not caring about what's happening in Ukraine, um, you know, voting against IVF, abortion bans when 57% of Ohioans support reproductive freedom. We saw that last November. Um, trashing veterans, whether it's Waltz or saying that what, what Trump said about the Congressional Medal of Honor was, was reasonable. Uh, Ohioans also believe in hard work and that that's how you get ahead. So it's bizarre that someone with one-sixth the experience of Sarah Palin, one se I'm sorry, of Dan Quayle, one-seventh the experience of, Dan of Sarah Palin is now on the ticket to BVP. Are you kidding me? Now, I know you're asking, well, if that's all true, David, how is this person the senator of Ohio? And even that, there's a story. The top of the ticket in the year Vance won won by 25 points. Almost everyone by the mid-20s or, or high teens, he won by six. Ohio is sending a message even with that. In a normal year, that's a loss. So whatever, wherever he learned all this stuff, it wasn't in Ohio. People don't talk or act like this in Ohio. It, I don't know if it's a think tank or heritage or Peter Thiel, whatever. This is not what we hear in Ohio. Um, and so when you think of Vance, please don't associate him directly with the word Ohio. I've got a better word to associate him with. And that's what Tim Wall so, so helpfully brought up not long ago. The word is actually weird. Weird is an extreme, toxic, in your space, in our freedom. You know, the things he's saying and pushing are just so bizarre that I think Tim Walsh really put his finger on it. But here's the most important part of what I'm going to say. As much as people ask about J.D. Vance, don't stop at J.D. Vance. Trump, Project 2025, and most importantly, all up and down the ballot, Vance is the tip of the weird iceberg, folks. Because if you think what he's saying is weird and extreme and toxic, where do you see the laws they are passing in the gerrymandered states that I talked to this morning or that we have all over the country? Because of gerrymandering, they're not just talking in this extreme way or toxic way, weird way. They're legislating it. They're making the laws of our state reflect of our states reflect the bizarre views of people like J.D. Vance that are so offensive to so many people. So if we wanna really win the battle for democracy this year in 78 days, we do it not just by making sure people know that Trump and Vance and Project 2025 are all weird. We make sure people see that at all levels of the ballot, be it North Carolina, be it Ohio, be it Arizona and Florida, they've got characters up and down the ballot that aren't only saying these weird things, but they're doing them. And if we wanna stop those things from happening, we need to stop them at all levels. There's a great opportunity to do it this year. Now that we've got them branded in this way, we can flip the Arizona State House. We can end the North Carolina supermajority. We can protect reproductive freedom in Missouri, in Arizona, in Florida. We can end gerrymandering in Ohio. And we can do that if we make sure that every voter realizes the weird that is so offensive to them in J.D. Vance is also on their ballot at all levels. Let's get it done, folks.